Welcome to Worship Online. I'm Reverend Linda Potter of Faith United Methodist Church. While the COVID-19 restrictions are starting to lift in our area, we are not yet back in our sanctuary. And while there are many things that we miss by not being together, we are focusing on health and, and safety for all. I give thanks for telephone calls and Zoom meetings and FaceTime and other ways that uh, we can stay connected. And technology helps us a lot, but the great connector is God's love. You are held in my prayers. For the next two weeks, Pastor Barry Fries will be our guest preacher. And I pray you find his messages uh, meaningful and relevant. They give you uh, a light and, and hope in your heart. I look forward to being together with you and our musicians on May 31st. Let's pray. Create in us a new heart, O Lord, and put a new and right spirit within us. You know our weaknesses, you know our faults, and yet you love us and call us to your service. In this time of worship, we celebrate your faithfulness and, and seek to reply with our own faithfulness. Let us hear joy and gladness. Forgive us our sins. Hear our prayers and petitions. And bless us in our gathering today. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This reading is from chapter 3 in Exodus. It is uh, a part of one of the really important stories uh, in the Old Testament for uh, people of the Hebrew faith, and of course it forms a, a wonderful foundation for people of the Christian faith. And so, uh, if you're uh, near or uh, have access to a Bible, I suggest you turn to it now, open up Exodus uh, chapter 3. Hear these words. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, now, my name is Barry, uh, officially the Reverend Barry Fries, um, and I am happy to be with you all at Faith Church this morning. I have been in your lovely sanctuary multiple times, uh, most recently for the for the wedding of your pastor, which was a joyous event. And, uh, and I look forward to being with you for just a little bit here today in this message. Um, I call this uh, set of messages, we're going to have two on this theme, uh, this Sunday and, and next Sunday, the Sunday before Memorial Day, and I call this the fire in the hole. Now that's a bit of a military phrase. Um, we're not necessarily talking about military, although I am mindful that the uh, uh, next Sunday is the Sunday before Memorial Day. Yet it really, the selection of the title really has more to do with our current, current situation. You know, it's safe to say one way to describe our current situation is that we are in a hole. Uh, the planet is in a hole. And this whole uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 business is, uh, is really, really something. 
I was looking forward initially to being with you physically. Um, can't do that. It's not uh, as safe as we would hope it to be. Um, so your pastor made a decision, and I certainly agree, uh, to be doing this uh, electronically. Um, so, fire in the hole. Um, today, I would like to begin, and I will begin, with uh, prayer. Would you open your hearts to prayer, please? Lord, I give you thanks for the chance to be together with these folks uh, in, in the video form and uh, in spirit. And Lord, uh, it's nice to see uh, faces. I can imagine seeing the faces I've seen before. Yet, it's also much nicer to know that your spirit is with us and that through your spirit we are connected no matter where we are, no matter what's going on. We give you thanks for the work of your spirit. I name the spirit of Christ, um, and we pray in that spirit in Jesus' powerful name. Be with us. Be with me. Uh, guide me in these words over the next minutes. Um, Lord, I give you thanks that uh, in your word it says that when we rise to bring your message, your spirit will guide us. So be with me, Spirit. Be with me, Holy Spirit, and guide me in this, and be with the hearts of those who see and listen. We pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Well, this, this situation we're in currently feels uh, different. Certainly it is different. Um, and yet, uh, you know, being different than anything we have uh, experienced personally, it's not different necessarily uh, to God or to the story of our planet or human history. There have been many, many plagues over the years and, and centuries and millennia. And, and so we draw on, uh, on stories, we draw on faith, we draw on uh, what we know about other, other situations like this. In, in my lifetime and in, in the relatives of uh, in the in the lifetime of your relatives, um, we uh, know about the the flu pandemic of 1918. Um, this uh, was an impact on my family, and today I'm going to tell you a story about uh, someone over 100 years ago in my family, and how they they dealt with the the situation, and and, and we're going to talk also about how God deals with these situations and how that turned out uh, for these folks. Specifically, we're talking about my grandfather, my paternal grandfather. Um, in English, he would have been George, Her he was George Herman Friese, um, Friese being the correct ethnic pronunciation for my, my last name. It's a German derivative, uh, as is common for many of our, our friends and family uh, who go back a ways in St. Charles County. Uh, my people were more from the western part of St. Charles County, Wentzville, uh, Dutzo, New Melli, and so forth, although both my parents graduated from St. Charles High School. So, um, so we're talking about George Friese, and George Friese uh, over a hundred uh, years ago, um, and we're talking about his activity in a in the the great flu pandemic. Um, now, some people call this the Spanish flu, and it's only really because the Spanish media um, got a hold of it and started talking about it first. Other governments put a lid on the the media. And did not uh, did not communicate much. There's actually some evidence that this thing started um, in uh, in Fort Riley, Kansas, which gives me some pause. I've had family members serve at Fort Riley. Um, regardless of the situation, um, that that flu was a mess. And I've got some some basic uh, numbers here. In general. Um, it's estimated that about 500 million people uh, got this got this bug. So at the time, that was about a third of the world's uh, population. Um, we're talking about the H1N1 flu, which is what the 1918-1919 flu was, and the number of deaths in that was about 675,000 in the United States, 675,000, um, and that's out of about 50 million uh, worldwide. Um, that's, that's pretty terrible. It's hard to imagine. Um, I don't know if you all 
are football fans have been to football stadiums and big stadiums. Imagine you had a stadium that was about 75,000 people uh, holding, and that would be filled uh, nine times in, in whole numbers, nine times with, um, with the dead, which is a crazy image. I hesitate even to say it, but, but that's, that's the kind of pandemic we're talking about, and that's the kind of pandemic that, that George Friese uh, was facing. And along with others uh, around in the early part of the the, uh, the previous uh, century, I want to draw particularly attention. We've read the scripture Exodus three one through uh, seven, but I want to draw particular attention um, to a couple things. One uh, in verse uh, one, I use the NIV translation, but the New RSV um, talks about the. Uh, the far side of the wilderness where Moses went. And, and this is a, it's kind of hard for us to imagine, uh, yet imagine yourself being just way out there. Of course, there were none of the conveniences connected to electronics, uh, 911 or anything like that. Um, just a, a side mention there, if you know somebody who's EMS or hospital staff or uh, clinic staff, please keep them on your on your hearts and your prayers, reach out to them, give them a call, a text, an email, one or anything like that. Um, just a, a side mention there, if you know somebody who's EMS or hospital staff or uh, clinic staff, please keep them on your on your hearts and your prayers. Reach out to them, give them a call, a text, an email, uh, whatever works for you, just to let them know that you're thinking of them and are holding them close uh, in your prayer heart not available to Moses out there in the wilderness. So he was out there on his own, just him and a, and a bunch of sheep. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that feels even more alone than anything we're experiencing today. Verse 7, uh, the Lord said, I have seen the misery of my people, and I am concerned about their suffering. This is very important about this uh, this passage today because it, it applies to us today. Part of what my grandpa George knew and part of what I hope you know and part of and what I'm really here to remind you about today is that God knows of your suffering and God is concerned about your suffering. And God, God is present with you at all times. Nothing can separate you uh, from the love of God. And this is so important. It's I'm a widower. I've been uh, single now for over five years. And, and believe me, I know what lonely feels like. And I suspect many of you uh, could know that. Uh, many of you more probably even know what grief feels like. And, and this situation, I'm here to tell you, is, uh, and it's no surprise to you, that this kind of lonely feels different. It's, it's, it's different. It's more challenging. Now, you know, people work this out in different ways. Uh, some people eat more. <laughs> I've heard of a, uh, some people in college call it a freshman 10. I think some folks are working on the COVID-15 here. Um, and that's, that's a challenge. I've been a lot heavier in my life. I, I'm not gaining weight much <laughs> at this situation. But, but I tell you, people deal with this kind of lonely, this kind of pressure, tension, stress, whatever you want to call it, anxiety. Um, and I'm here to tell you and remind you that since the most ancient of days in the faith that goes back to the one true God, uh, people have been reminded, and I remind you, that God knows of your suffering. God knows of your um, aches and anxieties and, and tensions. Now, about my Grandpa George. Now, Grandpa George was a character, to say the least. He was also very forward-looking. I've got a picture of him um, after the pandemic in the early 1920s in Kansas City, right here in Missouri, of a, uh, a convention called the National Old Trails Roads Association. And this was a forward-looking group that had the idea, and it turns out to be true, particularly, I mean, you see that in St. Charles where the first interstate was started and so forth. Um, this is a, 
a group that is optimistic. And in the early 20s, remember, this was after the pandemic. They were on the other side of this. And, and in working with this group, the National Old Trails Roads Association, my grandpa, George Friese, uh had faith. He had faith that, um, that there was something on the other side of the flu. He, you know, they were past the pandemic. Um, he had already had a daughter and a son. My father was born in 1919, um, Samuel August Friese. And, and that's, um, that's just evidence. He continued on. Not only did he continue on out of faith, he was a member of a, of a German-speaking Protestant congregation in, in western St. Charles County, St. John's Kaplan. Uh, maybe you've been out there. It's a beautiful little church in the Vale kind of setting. Um, many of my kinfolk are buried out there. He was a part of that congregation, and he, he struck out and even invested risks, I'll say, money in this newfangled idea called an automobile. And back in Wentzville over 100 years ago, my grandpa had a Ford store, and he, he had the optimistic view, the faith, I remind you, that there was something on the other side of this. I, I don't have any, any written evidence that that he, he took solace in Exodus 3, verse 7. But, but I see the evidence in his life. We've got pictures of him standing out in front of the Ford store, the Wentzville Historical Society, um, you know, has pictures of him also on their site and in their publications. And, and this verse 7, that God knows of our suffering and cares about our suffering, helped him through this, uh, I'm sure. I knew him as a much older fellow than he would have been in the 19 teens and 20s, um, and yet he was still generous. He was the kind of guy who would slip the pastor a check if the place, you know, the cemetery needed mowing or the repairs needed to be to the church. He generously gave me uh, money for one of my first international, well, it was my first international trip to study communications from Lindenwood. and. And these things are all evidence that he got through this. My grandmother, Freezy, got through it. Um, my dad and his sister got through it. Their youngest brother did not. They lost him um, at, a, at a very young age, and he's buried out at St. John's Kaplan. And yet, the family survived. The business uh, kept going strongly up into the Depression. It did not make it through the Depression, but, but in the 20s and post-flu, um, Grandpa Freezy took, took solace and took initiative. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Who in your life might want to know that God is with them, that God knows about their suffering, that God cares about their suffering, and you become the evidence. You become the person in their life that, that represents God. Remember, this is God's, God's method. God sends humans, and you're one of those dear folks that knows about that. So I wish you the best. I pray for you to know the best. And take this evidence of one old German stubborn kraut, I can say that because I'm, I'm German and stubborn, um, that there is something on the side of this, on the other side of this pandemic. God is with you. God cares about you and knows your suffering. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the knowledge, the peace that comes, that passes anything we can understand of your care for us, that you know of our suffering, that you, you know of each breath, each tear. We give you thanks for that, and it brings us peace. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. I look forward to being with you again next week. I'll have another story of someone in my family and how they how they reacted and how their family reacted to a difficult situation. God bless you. Be careful this week. And remember, God knows of your suffering and cares.